Regardless of names of people who were welcoming us into your midst. Nancy was one of the first people we met, mm -hmm. and we've seen several others with name tags. So I thought we might um, start with that idea this morning. As you already know, my name is Dana, Dana Angel, and this is Rich, my husband. I am co-chair along with our assistant pastor, Matthew Johnson, in this welcoming ministries team. Now the team came along a long time before Rich and I joined BUMC. The team was in place probably at least 20 years, Vaughn, Barbara, a long, long time. And they were very well established and they had wonderful routines in place and welcomed us as new members. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But um, so what happened in, in the lineage of the Welcome Ministries leadership is that there were two co-chairs, an administrative leader and a member of our team who were co-chairs. The administrative leader remained when her co-chair decided he was ready to give up the job. And so I came on board and I was working with Gail, our administrative leader. A year after that, Gail moved to Florida and I am still co-chair now along with our new assistant pastor, whose name is Matthew Johnson. So that's kind of a short lineage of our welcome team. We're joined here today by dear friends Vaughn and Barbara Simon. The Simons were key influences when Rich and I were visitors and ultimately new members then at Barrington. Um, they befriended us and they made us feel welcome in lots of personal ways. They began to make connections with us and make us feel like we were an important part of Barrington Church. So we're very grateful that they would join us today. So I'm wondering, as we're talking about how crucial names are, if I could talk everybody into putting on a name tag with just their first name, if you would be comfortable doing that, I would value it very much. Would you take a couple of pens sure. and those tags? And we can start on this side, and I, let me grab some more tags. If you already have a name tag, you're all good to go. Is there anybody here who just absolutely loves to go around in a circle and talk about themselves in a meeting like this? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Okay, so if you don't like to go around in a circle and talk about yourself, is there anybody here who likes candy? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I thought we might have a little hook for my memory with a little piece of candy. Mm. So, have a choice. Almond Joy. What makes you joyful? Almond Joy. <laughs> jolly Rancher. What makes you jolly? Okay. Oh, and what do you laugh about? Snickers? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pass this basket around. You help yourself. Yes, you can have more than one piece. You can have one of everything or two. But I'm going to start, and we'll send the basket this way this time. Thank you. So think about what you want me to remember about you. Is this more fun than going around in a circle and saying, uh, I moved from Marion, Illinois in 2015. Yeah, we talk about what makes us joyful. So, my name is Dana, and what makes me joyful, almond joyful, is playing my harp, almond joy. Looks I like go. you're ready. Yes, my name is Sophia, Hewan Sophia. Uh, what makes me sneaker is this sneakers. sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go next? <laughs> if you're ready. A lot of things make me snicker. <laughs> 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 
Well, it makes me snicker when Haywan doesn't want to use her real name because I don't use my real name, not my first name at all. I use my middle name. But she has a beautiful name, and I think we should use that. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your name, by the way? Anne. Anne. Pleasure. My name is Barbara. Joy, probably being around children, about mm -hmm. the freedom and naturalness of children. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Would you like Would to you know? Sure, of course. So, Amy and uh, Snickers. I, I like to laugh. But I was thinking on the train today coming in, I love to watch the parents with their little children on the train. Yes. And they, they always are suspicious of me because I'm looking at them. <laughs> well for your group. We have a, a chart, a storage ladder, whatever you want to call it, for our name tags a little more toward the sanctuary away from our front door. It's probably halfway between here and the brown door I'm facing. Um, so you walk in, our, walk in our church and greet several people and then pick up your name tag and go on into church. Um, so it's interesting to find out what we do um, differently in different places. We know one of the most important ways to make people feel valued and included is to call them by name. Um, this is key for me. It creates a sense of belonging and it increases in a feeling of inclusion, being included in the group. In Isaiah 43.1, we read, But now thus says the Lord, He created you. O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. I think that's the feeling of belonging is essential in that verse. Dale Carnegie also says that a person's name is to him or her the sweetest and most important sound in any language. So here's a non-example for you. You know, sometimes I learn as much from non-examples as I do from good examples. So this one's on me. This past week, Rich and I had to had to visit a car dealer because my favorite 15-year-old van gave up the ghost in our garage and it would not go one more foot. And so we ended up at a dealership talking to a young man who was wearing a name tag. And I'm pretty sure the first day I saw him, his name tag said E-R-I-K. Because that's what I called him all day long, Eric. Hi, Eric. Thanks for letting us drive this car. Pleasure to meet you, Eric. Thanks for being so nice to us, Eric. And I got home that night and realized I looked at his name tag once more. His name was not Eric. His name was Nick. True story. His name tag said Nick. For some reason, I think it was the stress of the day, I called him by the wrong name. So I did, and I ended up apologizing to him. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I called you that. That one's on me. I know that your name is Nick. So Rich then began to make a, a joke about Eric was not his name. Not Eric, not Nick, but Eric, the combination of the two. My point being that it's important for the one who calls the name, and it's important for the one who hears the name, that we have the right name and that we can speak to people using names. It validates both of us. So next time I read somebody's name tag, I'll try to make sure to read it carefully. So, um, names, names are so important. So your agenda item number three, um, I thought this might help guide our thinking 
together. And if you have questions or want to relate an experience during our time, please speak up. This is certainly very casual and open. Um, why welcome is important. You guys are really good at welcome. Do you know that? You really are. We, Vaughn and Barbara have been here before as visitors, but Rich and I never have. And as we walked in the door today, we felt very welcomed and we felt very comfortable throughout your whole service. So we thank you for that. Um, we enjoy being part of the welcome team. We kind of um, thrive on it, if you will. Um, so why is welcome important? You know, in this day and age, if someone's looking for a church, they're probably going to go online and Google Methodist churches near me, right? And so getting a person to come for the first time is probably all done via the internet. Or maybe somebody might say, hey, you ought to come with me to church on Sunday. That word of mouth is still key, getting people to come to our churches. Getting them to return to our churches is an entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. So you come once, but then you have to create a feeling of, of compassion and love and welcome most of the time to get people to return. And we believe that most people will come back if they've been made to feel valued and treasured. And that's where the work of the welcome team comes in. So how did we find BUMC? We were in certain search of a church um, around 2010. And we were traveling to our daughter's cross country meet and happened to drive by Barrington United Methodist Church. If you've ever been on that corner in Barrington, the church has a really nice presence there at an intersection and a big tall white steeple that's very beckoning. Um, and then by the side of the road, there's the sign with the Methodist emblem. And so we're driving by to Ashley's cross country meet and we said, oh, that's a pretty church. And um, oh, it's Methodist. Well, maybe we should visit this place. So we did, we decided we'd come and visit. And the first Sunday, it was a very pleasant experience and we decided, well, okay, we'll come back again. So we flew under the radar, several more visits, and each time we found out that there was somebody there like these two who was willing to look us in the eye, shake our hand or pat us on the back and say, welcome. We are really glad you're here. So, you know, we get these warm, fuzzy feelings and we keep going back. But we haven't committed to a new member class or any kind of a committee or anything like that. And so, um, finally, one day as we're leaving, I looked at him and I said, you know what? This is not an accidental welcome. These people have planned all of this. It is intentional and it's radical and it is extravagant. It is not accidental. So by then we were hooked. Vaughn and Barbara befriended us and we got a welcome bag and invited us to dinner. The rest is history. We've been at BUMC as members for five years. And you know what? It's not because we remember the order of service that particular day, although it was nice. It was a lovely service, I'm sure. But it's because there was somebody there who connected with us and made us feel like we belonged. So welcome is so important. Our team prepares a welcome bag like this, two of them, each Sunday to share with people like Rich and I on their first time or two in church. And I'm gonna pass this around just so you can take a peek and we'll talk more about what's inside uh, later. One of the most important pieces though, is the loaf of freshly baked bread, because we know that Jesus is the bread of life. So a little symbolism there, and you can take a peek, just enjoy, thumbing through the little brochures and looking at the little tchotchkes in the bottom of the bag. Does anybody have like welcome experiences that have happened to them? here or maybe at a, another church as you were visiting if you want to talk about well i will um when my husband and i were looking for a church when we were first married um because we moved to a new a new uh, town we visited several churches and one of the churches at the passing of the peace 
nobody turned to us and shook our hands. Nobody. And so we never went back. And so that's a that's a non welcome experience. Yeah, we were very young, so you know it we don't look off pretty I don't think, but <laughs> nobody wanted to recognize us at all. Wow. That makes me very sad inside. And that's a very uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. So, no. Yes. So I've been to a lot of the churches because I'm a pastor's wife. And, um, but it's not a thing where, you know, somebody has your, they might ask you later in the service to stand up and introduce you. But um, we also spent sometimes a short period of time at a church for many, many, many years at a church. Um, and knowing how, particularly if you're going to a new congregation, and you don't know anyone and mm -hmm. haven't been in all the meetings that happened before the appointment was decided, what the bishop said, et cetera. <laughs> it really does um, matter when you come in and people, most people don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I always pay attention to how the greeting is when you come to the door. They don't know me, I don't have a name tag. But I, first of all, one of the things I was very happy about is that I never had a bad experience first coming to a church. But there definitely are differences between congregations and how they seek welcome. And so it really, really um, mattered to me. They didn't know who I was, quote unquote. But they made me feel welcome because I was a new person they had not seen before and I was coming through the door as usually with three little boys right behind me. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, they would tell me, you know, they had a nursery or a child care area. Yes. And, you know, those, if I wanted to take them there, which I usually did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that really made a difference. And so wherever we serve, um, having a really welcoming congregation where not only the people as you come through the door, but like you said, when you stand up to greet one another, people around you mm -hmm. are regularly mm -hmm. always greeting you, whether you're a new person or somebody they see every Sunday. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. So I, um, this is my 10th church when I came here, because I move a lot, not because I get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> There's one church where they have the visitor stand up, and then the congregation stands up, turns to you, and starts singing a song. Oh, really? And they oh. have this welcoming song that they sing. Oh. On the one hand, you're like, ah, and on the other, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of them at work, but when you're the only one, you're like, okay, guys, oh. <laughs> okay, they're all coming at me. But um, it, it becomes a laughing kind of thing. It was cool, but um, it was sort of neat that they just all had this song ready and they just start singing at you. That's, I've never heard of that before. It's a unique experience. Yes. Yeah. Uh, during my tour of duty uh, in Korea, uh, I shared a room with uh, two Korean soldiers, uh, and um, we shared a lot of um, the cultural exchanges. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and one of my mates was an actual Buddhist, so, so we had a lot of them. Um, got me kind of curious as, uh, as to what the uh, how the Buddhist worship is. And he told me that Buddhism is not so much a religion as a philosophy. As a, and, uh, and that the philosophy helps, uh, it helps, to, helps, to, helps to people to guide them. And, the, and, Bu and Buddhism is, like, uh, is, is the, is the uh, most popular religion in South Korea. Christianity comes in close second. And I've always been kind of curious Looking forward to go back there someday just to visit the Buddhist temple. You feel that yeah, kindness. Yeah, to see, a, to see what kind of beauty you can do with outsiders. Yes. So I, I have had the experience with people walking through my Methodist church. They have two people. And then magically, they kind of know some song or some prayer or cry or something that they're all going to do in the middle of it. It's really not cool to me. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, yeah. and so mm -hmm. I, I think those are interesting things to think about. I see a lot when people stand up and there's just people around them, like, oh, you're out, you're going to go in and you're going to go in. And I think those are the yes. things. 
We had one a new family came to the church and we were excited to have them. And right before the service start, our 90 some years old church member came and she found out the new member was sitting in her spot where she oh. sat for you know, 70 some years and she just asked them to move. <laughs> Example. <laughs> yeah, it was not. They didn't come back. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, rest assured, no one asked us to move out of their seat this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we know welcome is so very important. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody, anybody else? Make sure everyone's voice is heard. Okay. So, agenda item number four. Um, what does the UNC welcome look like on a Sunday morning? So, <coughs> several months back, our uh, monthly newsletter featured an article on our welcome team. And there are a few pictures mm, um, of us in action. Um, and I have, here it starts with this young man uh, who's running in a marathon in Burlington, Vermont today, actually. His name's Jack, and Jack, along with Rich, staffed the portico, the very front entrance of our church. So this article goes here, and then turn the page, and it continues. Don't feel like you have to read every word, but the pictures kind of help to, to see what we look like on a Sunday morning. So our intentional welcome at the UMC starts outside our front door, and we call this the portico. It's kind of a... Um, uh, carport kind of situation. You can drive under, get out, and go park your car, whatever you need to do. Portico readers like Rich and this Jack, who's in the um, newsletter, the, the banner, <clears throat> greet people as they come in that door and open those heavy outside doors for them. Um, they help those who need assistance out of the cars. Sometimes they've even been known to go park the car, but don't tell our insurance carrier because that's not really a good idea. Um, and that's extreme and rare. But as Rich is often known to say, having somebody outside the doors of our church also helps us be aware of church security. And nobody likes to really talk about that, but it's a very real concern. And I'll get more to that in a little bit. But Rich and Jack are our bouncers outside our door. And, um, you know, they're the first greeters of welcome and also the first line of defense. Um, on the inside then, we have two greeters stationed just inside, we call it the rotunda, it's kind of a circular area in our church. 
And that's probably where some of you, you might have been greeted by Vaughn and Barbara that Sunday. That's where we were greeted. Um, and they stand to, to give a handshake or a hug and a, a short, friendly greeting like, we're sure glad you're here today, or what a pretty sweater. You just look like sunshine as you come in the door. You know, just something short and welcoming. Um, but key for our team, and we have to practice this because we're not all comfortable doing this, is if you see somebody new come in, you might say, and this is hard for me, you might say, hi, my name's Dana. I don't think we've met. I'm glad you're here today. And that often we'll say, well, open up a conversation. Well, hi, I'm Shirley. This is the first time I've come to your church. Mm. Now, I have to tell you, Von Simon is an expert at this. He, he gives welcome like no other. And if you're new, he's going to know it, and he will make you feel right at home. Mm. If we have additional greeters, like maybe for a special Sunday, like, say, Christmas Sunday, we'll have more greeters stationed between that front door and the sanctuary entrance just to kind of help people along the way, show them where the washroom is, show them where the coat closet is, uh, and just how do we get to the sanctuary. Mm. These greeters assist, um, assist guests in finding whatever they need to know. You mentioned the nursery for children. You know, that's a huge key for young families. So this Sunday morning routine begins about 30 minutes before the service. And then it extends after the service as well with the same people on guard as uh, worshipers leave. In addition, then, we have two, one or two people um, stationed at our welcome table where our welcome bags, those, like that blue one, are ready to hand out. So I tried to set up a, a mock welcome table here on the piano. Um, we have things that just designated as the welcome table because somebody in the service will say, if you're new to our church, we want you to stop by the welcome table as you leave because there's a team member there ready to give you a blue bag and make you welcome. The other things we have on our welcome table when we get new members, we take their picture and put them in a little frame and have their picture framed there. It helps our team remember who became a new member and it also helps that new member feel like part of the church. So after we have new members join and then the next class of new members comes along, we take those pictures out of the frame and make a family album. Mm. Pass that around. And again, it helps our team remember who was there. Who joined the church? Who became a part of our family? Additionally, we have other things um, in our welcome table. Things like more of the tchotchkes that are in the bag. Can I ask a quick question? Of course. The, um, this little album here, is that for your welcome team to look at? So you know who's who, or where does that go? That is a great question. It's designed for the welcome team to okay. help us remember. Okay. It's just in a drawer of the, the, table, the welcome table. Um, but you know, if anybody wanted to look at it, of course, we would say, sure, I think I have their picture. Somebody might say, hey, do you remember that young fellow that joined our church? You know, and, he, and then we say, oh, I do remember. Let's see if we can find his picture. You know, and then it gives us a way to connect. Yes. We prepare two bags each week, and that is a great question. On a great Sunday, we'll use more than two and eat more. And so what we've learned is that we have the stash of all the goodies in our welcome table. And in case we run out of bread, we keep a Panera gift card or two tucked in the welcome table so that we can give a fresh loaf of bread unbaked. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and after the service. So we have a lot of people that come to the church during service, like um, because they're walking around downtown or they know that there's a tour and they're coming in to say, a window when it's a tour, you know, so there are people that are completely entering the house. 
during the service. Oh, so, yeah, so that is something that we have to also think about. Mm -hmm. Because people are asking information coming in the door. You know, not necessarily wanting to go to the service. They may or may not, but they just come in to find out what is this and yes. you know, tour. Yes. So there's a lot of activities going on between the service. Do you have somebody who helps them? Somebody who's each Sunday designated to be their guide? Um, well, a lot of times, um, Angie kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's what one of the reasons we want to have the training is to get a larger group so we get a schedule. Oh, uh, sorry, yes. next year, so mm -hmm. it rotates. Perfect. Perfect. And it sounds like you need somebody there right. through the whole yes. service. Yes. Based right. on what you just told me, or right there, or close by, mm -hmm. so that they can see as people come in. Absolutely, they come in all during the service. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a whole new level of yes. scheduling that we <laughs> yeah. don't experience. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. What's that? Most churches. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's a huge opportunity. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That welcome, even if somebody's just there for a tour, that welcome could be True. all they need to hear to say, okay, I'm going to go back there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You seem to put a lot, a lot more emphasis on the actual personal reading as opposed to uh, uh, putting all your eggs in, in the, the basket of social media. Uh -huh. It's the personal touch. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, even, uh, I guess you do have, have the, uh, the Facebook page. Or mm -hmm. We do. But uh, how about, uh, do you have an actual YouTube channel? That would, that would we do not, not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. that, that would go a long way toward bringing uh, That's well, a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a YouTube channel for here? Uh, not as such, but we do have a, uh, have a social media page. We have um, Facebook page. a Facebook page where we have, uh, we have the sermons. Uh, Oh yeah, a website. website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do too. And then someone can listen to the sermons if they didn't get to go yeah, and 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure the the sermons will probably um, uh, spark some uh, spark people's curiosity to think, hey, what's this church all about? Well, certainly, yeah. you bet. Yeah, but but I would say if you had a, a but if you did have a YouTube channel, that would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are starting to play around with you. With the meetup group on Beta.com. Oh, we're starting to do exactly what you said. That's so interesting. Group people join the group. It's just Chicago. Really? That's so interesting to me. I told Sophia I'm not real technically inclined. <laughs> um, so this is this is new territory for me, but I'm very intrigued. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So, um, so how do we staff this? Someone mentioned the schedule. Um, so our greeters at the door and at the portico, they, they're on a rotating schedule and greeters typically take like one Sunday a month to greet. Say, hi, good morning, I'm Damon, glad you're here today. Rich and I have the fourth Sunday of every month, so we can just mark on our calendar that that's when we are expected at the front door. If you're a bread person and it's your job to bring the uh, welcome bag, the blue bag with bread, you usually sign up for a month at a time. So that's just how our church has chosen to schedule that. Do um, you have any questions about what that looks like? You just get the blue bag the first time you see them? Or, uh, okay. And we're on the honor system. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you must have a budget. Oh yes, for yes. all of this. I'm right. just interested in a ballpark of what your budget is. I don't know if you want to share that. Or not. On down our agenda, um, I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Oh, it's um, great. Yeah, I can answer it now if you want. Or sure. Yeah. Well, our our annual budget is about five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and. Um, I can go into more of what we use that for. These blue bags obviously are part of that budget, and we've just reordered. They run like a dollar thirty-five a piece, so we just ordered two hundred and fifty of these um, to last us for several Sundays. Obviously, uh, at two per Sunday. Um, 
Also, part of that budget is the bread, when members uh, bring bread when it's their month to supply the bread. They're supposed to turn in their receipts from wherever they get the bread, and then the, they'll be reimbursed. But part of that turning in receipts helps us track our money and helps us justify our budget. So it's really important that, um, that we do that. Um, I'm gonna circle back around to this, if that's sure. okay. Yeah. Um, and if I still have unanswered questions, please tell me, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. All right, so um, agenda item number five, do's and don'ts for welcome team leaders. The co-chair that I worked with um, prior to Pastor Matthew, um, her name was Gail, and Gail was, she was um, a very good team educator, and she taught us do's and don'ts, and we, you know, sometimes practice what's appropriate for um, what looks right to a visitor, and, and um, I have to tell you, some of these were uncomfortable for me, but they're crucial, I think, as we, as we bring up greeters in the way we want them to grow. And so our team is very social and because we stay together for years and years and years, we like each other and we're friends. So some of the don'ts, I'm actually gonna start with the don'ts. Mm -hmm. Some of the don'ts for team visitors, or team greeters, excuse me, don't stand in groups talking. <laughs> well, now I have to tell you, when I haven't seen Vaughn and Barbara for a whole week and we want to catch up, it's just natural. Hey, what did you guys do for dinner last night? You know, and, and no, you can't do that if you're a greeter, okay? Mm. Never have your back to the door. Mm. That's something I have to think about because, you know, sometimes you just get turned around and, you know, you get busy but not cognizant of the body language that presents to visitors. Mm -hmm. um, so this friend Gail moved to Florida and she was visiting churches as a guest, not as an administrative team member. And she texted me one day and she said, I just walked in a new church this morning and I overheard people saying to one another, are you a visitor or are you a <laughs> member? <laughs> and Gail says, don't ever do that. And she says, I know BUMC greeters would not be asking if someone was a guest. There's a more comfortable way to do that, mm -hmm. and that's by saying, I don't think we've met before. My name is Dana. I'm so glad to see you today. And then, Hi, just a second. I'm not going to sing you a song. <laughs> but just to say, Hi, my name's Dana. Have we met? You know, mm -hmm. and that's a more comfortable way to identify if someone is a member who goes to a different service or someone you haven't seen before as a guest. And if somebody goes behind you to avoid being greeted, don't force someone to be welcomed. They might want to fly under the radar. I know that feeling. So what should you do? Well, smile. A smile can be seen from a football field away and I've been greeted by smiles in this place ever since I have come in this morning. You've got that part. Just smile. If somebody asks you directions to the washroom, you've probably got a visitor on your hands. That's a great way to go, hmm, I need to make sure they feel welcome. Watch for body language. If, if someone's unsure where to go, looking around for the sanctuary or the nursery, they're probably a guest. It's an opportunity then to say, I don't think we've met before. Yes? Uh, you were mentioning uh, the bread. You know, I mean, we do have, like, um, during the holidays, we have, like, a, a walnut sale for visitors. Yeah. 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 Nice. Nice. That's, that people really look forward to those kinds of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, we take a donations for the, for, uh, for the, for the animals. So finally, tell newcomers what you want them to do. If you want them to fill out an attendance card and put it in the offering plate, bring that to their attention. People will usually do what you tell them to do. If you want them to stop at the welcome table for that blue loaf of bread, a, blue lo a bag containing a loaf of bread, tell them to do that. Most of the time they will, unless they just don't want to be greeted yet. And sometimes that's a process, you have to be ready for it. 
Okay, so agenda item number six. <clears throat> so that's what BUMC Welcome looks like on a Sunday morning in a nutshell, but what does it look like in our team meetings or at other events? So um, in your handout, in your little packet, one of the pages has our handout from our October meeting that we just did um, last Monday. And it pretty much follows this order of business each month. Um, you can skim that at your leisure. This team that meets for this agenda is a team of 16 people. These are the group of 16 people that stay together for years and years and add newcomers as, as we need to. Um, we organize the majority of the work of the team, like who's going to be greeting, who's bringing bread, who's going to cover the Christmas Eve service and whatnot. We meet once a month and um, they staff also staff the welcome table. Within our 16 member team, we have one person who oversees the scheduling of volunteers to staff the portico and rotunda and the welcome table. She's, that's one of her strengths. Sheila can get people to fill jobs quicker than you can blink an eye. That's, she's just super good at that and she likes to do it. So finding people who like to do the job that needs to be done is key for a mm, true. One person oversees the scheduling of volunteers to staff our coffee fellowship. I noticed this church has a fellowship after services. You probably already have that covered somewhere else. It just happens to fall under the umbrella of our welcome team. And then we have another couple who coordinates our ambassadors. And these ambassadors follow up with visitors who sign in the attendance pad in the pew. For example, Simons and the Angels signed your attendance pad this morning, so your ambassador or person might follow up with us, you know, or with a, an email or a phone call. I think um, our ambassadors, I think, follow with a phone call. You know, that's just, um, that's an arm of our welcome team. And then we have a team uh, member who takes minutes from our meetings and keeps us honest going from month to month. Our team is not governed by the church council nominating committee. We are separate from that, and so our church, um, our team remains intact. Mm -hmm. um, we don't turn over members every three years, like some committees that Methodist churches do. And so we build strong friendships, and that's part of our part of our philosophy that we need to be a strong community within our team, so we can we can disseminate that strong community feeling within the church. So we have to grow it intimately before we can share it with others. Um, we have strong ideas and beliefs and philosophies of welcome and we find that to be very valuable. So in addition to these 16 team members, we also have additional dedicated greeters who, who don't sit on that 16 member team, but they'll come greet on Sunday morning and say, Welcome, we're glad you're here. Yes. What's your membership? Oh dear. Total. Not attendance, but membership. Okay, Vaughn. <laughs> attendance? No. Okay. Matt, what is attendance? services on Sunday? Yes. Okay. Yes. The first one is a chapel service. It's at 8 o'clock. It's a small, it's in a room about this size. Um, it's a, kind of an abbreviated service. The choir doesn't sing. Um, but you still have this welcoming team for this service too? Okay. You still have this welcoming team for that small uh -huh. service? There's someone at the 8 o'clock welcoming. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a little hard to staff that one. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the portico because when it's cold outside, eight yeah. o'clock is an early seven thirty is an early time to open those doors. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we have a nine thirty service. That's the traditional service, uh, like the one we experienced today here in this place. And then uh, we have a contemporary service at eleven. 
that's back in the, the chapel space, the smaller space. So Vaughn's our numbers guy. Thanks, Vaughn, for, for calling up those numbers for us to answer that question. Now, this team staffs more than just the Sunday morning. Um, there was a gentleman named uh, Martin Lee who sat behind, yes. behind us yeah, this yeah, morning yes. in your service. And, um, he informed me that he was coming to a meeting at Barrington on Thursday, and he said it's going to be a great big meeting. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I better find our welcome team and make sure we have somebody at those doors because <laughs> um, that's one of the things we do. Um, the conference meetings, like he described, and people who are not familiar with our facility might come and be a part of that um, experience. We have special view and see activities and services other than Sunday morning, like that Christmas Eve service, perhaps. Welcome, glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and not as um, joy, not as joyful an opportunity to serve, but certainly as crucial. Our team also steps up to honor families when there's a memorial service, and so we feel it's important to greet there. The, the handshake and the greeting is a little different, of course, in that situation. Um, and sometimes it's harder to find the words rather than just, uh, you might say, so how did you know what the person's name is? Or we're so happy you could come and be with the family. So you have to tailor your greetings based on, based on the situation. So after we've greeted and found some visitors who would like to become members then we host our 16 member team hosts a discover BUMC class and so um, that is an opportunity for us to, to offer a light luncheon or a dinner so that these visitors can learn more about what it means to be Methodist and what it means to be a Methodist church member at our specific location and um, that's an opportunity <clears throat> for us to connect with those new members and make them feel a connection to us. Going back to my personal experience, when Rich and I were Discover BUMC candidates, I think the Simons were, our, I know you were, our hosts at that meeting, and they provided a light meal and sat with us through the orientation setting and then we're there to answer any questions we might have. So um, this class, we always hope, will result in new members joining our church. But you know, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't produce new members, it always produces people who have feelings of connection with the team and with the administrative staff. And we try to convey to people that it doesn't make you belong any more or any less if you are a member or if you're not a member. You're still important to us and we value you. And that's just crucial in my estimation. So after, um, if there are people who want to join the church, then we have a new member Sunday. And during one of the worship services, the new members are received into membership. I'm sure you're familiar with that. One member of our team takes the pictures of the new members, and their pictures are framed. We've kind of already been over that, and put on the welcome table, and then in that binder, wherever it ended up, um, like a little family um, photo binder for future reference. And then um, our church also takes their pictures and prints them in the banner, the monthly newsletter, to try to let everyone know who it is. Can, did you want to tell us a comment? Anybody? I thought it was my hand. Okay. Any questions? Yes. There's one thing we're thinking about is sort of outreach beyond who comes in the door, like to uh, getting information at the college dorms in the loop wow. or condo buildings in the loop. Do you, does your church do outreach and is that a different committee if you do or how is that? That would be a different um, committee. Um, again, you're in a different setting. Mm -hmm. Then we are, you know, you have the population concentration here that, that we don't have. Um, 
We have a member care team that goes out to people's homes, but that's more for people who are shut-ins or recovering from, from surgery or something, a member care team. Um, do, you already, do you already have some people who do that? I think we're... Steve, no, Steve, Steve. Well, Steve, yeah, we have the Stevens, but, but I don't think we have really got the outreach to the college students. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have an outreach to college students either. But you know what? That could be like one person might from a welcoming ministries team. That might be their their subcommittee, you know. But they could report back to the welcome team. And Talk about needs and what's working well and what you could improve. That's a really important piece of outreach. I'm also just curious, you have sort of a, a famous mega church in your area that's sort of going through some hard times currently, but how does that how does, does that affect uh, how you approach things in facing a, a church with that sort of <laughs> You know, I think we just do our thing. I think we just just mind our own business and and do do what we do. Um, and there are neighbors to the east, and you know we treasure we treasure the good work that they're doing. But um, I don't I don't know. Do we have competition? I don't think we have competition with with Willow Creek. I think we have envy. <laughs> <laughs> Churches um, seem a little over the top. It kind of takes away from it. It takes away from the ministry. Draw it draws you more to the back of the building itself, or the one from the message behind it. It's you know, a little, this, little excessive. This is just Dana. I have no no scientific basis for this at all. But um, I think we seek what we're comfortable, ways that we're comfortable with worship, you know, and, and um, some people gravitate toward the traditional worship that BUMC has, um, and some people for them the worship experience is magnified when they are in a, in a, a large setting. We, Rich and I live near um, another very large church called Christ Community Church, and that church has a huge following. And, but again, you know, they're, um, they're a whole lot different than BUMC. So it's just whatever your heart desires, I think, that um, leads you where you worship best. Okay, so agenda item number seven. My name is Susan from the Apples this week. Enjoy your niece. My pleasure. Let's be in touch. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Glad you could be here. So every team has stuff. Are we running out of time? Every team has stuff and you have to have a place to put it. So the place where we put our stuff is in a cabinet. It's a, it's a cabinet about this wide, maybe a little bigger, and about this deep. And on one end it has drawers, and on the other end it has a door that has a little lock. No need for the lock. But anyway, um, that's where we we set up our, the top of it much like the piano looks. That's a Sunday morning look for us pretty much. And inside we keep all the little goodies, the little paper clips, the pens, the, the notebooks, you got that idea. So that's where it's all stored. The binder, the family picture album is under there. The, um, the frames with pictures are stored there. The frames waiting for pictures. Um, we have a name tag request form. If you're into, you know, supplying people with these plastic name tags, you're probably going to need some kind of a request form to go to your office. This is what our church uses. I see I even have somebody's name on the back who requested a name tag. I sure hope I got her one. But <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> that's, that stays in our um, 
welcome table, along with an information gathering card. If Vaughn identifies a newcomer, Barbara's going to pull out one of those cards and, and let them write their name down, or she will. And, and then we'll pass that information on to the people in the office who track those things for us. Um, our church newsletter, our banner, we try to keep one of the front pockets on that table filled with new banners. We passed the banners around earlier to, to show what those are. And it's a place for members like us to store our stuff on Sunday morning. You know, if you have a glasses case you don't want to carry or a purse or whatever, you stuff it in the in, um, welcome table. So our um, this, this is before Dana, but our church designated a spot in the rotunda for that table. And um, that might be a consideration that you would need to think about. Where do you have room for your stuff? All right. So agenda item number eight. I'm sorry our friend had to leave because this is where I was going to talk about our budget just a little <laughs> bit. Um, there are lots of practical considerations for a team like this. Budget, forms, a systematic way of tracking visitors. Um, but first and foremost, your welcome team needs a budget. We use our budget to cover our team's expenses. And I think our budget runs about $5,000 a year, but most years we don't use the entire budget. Um, our expenses include those bread bags. Every Christmas Eve, we give a little gift to people who attend our worship services. And there, last year, there were four Christmas Eve services. This year, we're, we already have them. We're giving little, little pens like these um, with the church logo and the church information on them. Um, I think these were like 88 cents a piece. So we order a thousand of these. Um, we probably won't use them all on Christmas Eve, but then we have leftovers to put in, in the bags for newcomers. Um, our money covers the food for the Discover BUMC class and all those other little items that we put in the bags, as well as the bread um, for the bread bag. Our team uses an expense form. I'm going to leave this with you. You're more than welcome to use it, modify it, it as you need to for your situation um, to turn in along with receipts to our accounts payable person in the office who follows through with that. And then, you know, another practical consideration beyond the funds is just making sure your administrative team is on board with what your welcoming ministries team is doing. And there's a lot of support across those two groups that has to be in place for you to do your work as an as a welcoming team. We've talked about designating funds, that's huge. Also design uh, designing forms for your visitor information and your name tag requests. These are things we've already talked about. Tracking visitors systematically. Each week there's a gal from our office who sends me an email and she'll, um, she'll say, oh, this was our visitor. These were our visitors in um, the eight o'clock service. These people came to classic worship. These people were in crossroads. Oh, now this one was a first time visitor. She's really good about putting notes along with the name. Or this person's been here five times, you know, so we know that that person's probably just about ready for a Discover UNC class. And then your administrative team would want to help you design and provide a space for your team. So, one of the things I felt, oh, yes. Um, when you're talking about guest tracking, when you said a uh, person in the office, is that a paid staff member, a volunteer, retiree? That's does? a great question. Elizabeth, her name's Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is a paid staff member. Mm -hmm. She's in our front office, and that's part of the job description that she fills for us. So if I can rewind my tape just a little bit, remember I talked about Gail earlier. Gail was also on, um, on staff, paid position on staff, and she was, she was really skilled at tracking people, and, and she, 
she had a whole way of bringing our welcome team up in the way we should grow and um, teaching us things. And when she moved away, we, we found that we had a, a need for someone similar to Gail who could keep track of these people who were visiting us. And so luckily, we were able to get Elizabeth on board in the office. And um, she, she is in a different um, job description than Gail, but she's doing a fabulous job of keeping our team informed about who's coming. And, and then when you get that data, what do you do with it? Well, I, I make a copy of it and distribute it to our team just to make people know um, that there have been visitors. Our ambassadors will follow through with the first time visitors okay, um, and contact it. them. Yeah. And then, you know, as we notice, okay, somebody's been here five times. This would be a great person to talk to about, would you like to come to a live dinner and hear more about the church and think about joining? That's hmm. kind of how that those. We probably need to be more systematic, you know, more um, following a protocol, but that's kind of where we are at this particular time. Other questions? No? All right, so um, I come from a, a teaching background, and, and so I always think it's important to keep teaching and growing our skills in various ways. So since I've been a co-chair of this team, some of the things we've done in that kind of um, uh, chapter is to continue building our community in various ways. Some of the things we've learned about as a team, we've done CPR and first aid training. Just because um, we're, the first, we're the first people to see friends as they come through the door. And if we notice that they're ill or um, need assistance of some kind, it's really key for, for us to have at least some basic first aid CPR skills. And I think that came to our attention one day when um, a gentleman in a wheelchair and his aide came in and somehow he, he cut his hand, the gentleman in the wheelchair, and the aide said, do you have a Band-Aid? Yeah. And we're like, I don't know, do we have Band-Aid? <laughs> and that kind of started the whole thing, well, we need to have Band-Aid in that welcome team uh, cabinet. We need to know first aid. We need to know CPR. And so we did some training like that. Um, we're partnering right now with our trustees as they develop a church safety plan. And uh, because we want to know things like, how do we tell people to, to exit? Well, yes. a month ago, we were having a cookout, and the grill was fired up outside one of the doors, and someone opened the door, and in came the smoke from the grill, and you know what I'm going to say next. Uh, <laughs> the smoke alarm sounded in the whole church, you know. Everyone froze. Pastor kept talking. He's like, yeah, I know, it's not real. Well, now if you know anything about Barrington United Methodist Church's history, the church did burn down. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's like, oh no, the church is on fire. What are we going to do? Not in, a, not in an ethereal way. Is so one of our team members came to the center aisle and she says, Pastor, and she's a very small gal, Pastor, we have to clear the church. And everybody's like, seriously? We have to go outside, and so then Rich and I stood up as members of this welcome team, and we said, come on, folks, we've got to go. And reluctantly, you know, then everybody was able to exit. So we're working with our trustees for plans like this because we know the people and we know the church. So it falls to us to mm -hmm. take care of the people in the church. We've studied what we feel we do well. We've studied what we think needs improvement. And we try to continually push toward a greater good. Um, we've developed and written a team mission statement. And I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. Um, you have that mission statement. It's on the second page, right. I think. I noticed you have a mission statement for your church. And a philosophy is right on the front of this bulletin today. Yes. That was awesome. We can't see that. 
<clears throat> new this year is a program for our team called Peace Promise, and it's named after one of our members who passed away in July. Um, and this program is another arm of outreach that Pete felt very passionate about, and it's if we haven't seen somebody for several weeks, our team has decided it might be lovely to write just a personal note that says, hey, I miss you. I sure hope everything's okay with you. No pressure, just a note written in love. Um, within our 16 member team, I'm sorry, sorry. within our 16 member team, we celebrate birthdays just to, you know, create that sense of community. We have a summer social and a Christmas party. We take meals and send cards to people who are recovering within our team from, say, surgeries or if there's been a death in their family to try to build that, that strong community. Thank you, yes. Yeah, we have something similar to that. Uh, our care connection group, uh, we send uh, Perfect. We send, uh, I think, uh, we send cards to members that have been with us for a while. We send them to me and to them that are uh, still thinking about your... And, and, we, and we have, um, I think we just recently had a little, uh, little birthday kind of a gathering. There you go. Yeah. Members of the one See, you have it going on already, just in a different committee or a different place. It's lovely. Thank you. So, we might think about what the next steps are for the Chicago Temple. Mm -hmm. As you grow your welcome team, you've already got a great start with welcome here. I don't think you really need us, but um, it's your time to brainstorm now. Would you talk to us about what you think your next steps want to be, what you see happening? within your church, um, what you want to see happen, um, how you want to organize your your group. Have you, have you gone there yet with your team? Have you thought about that? It's in the early stages. 